I'd like to talk about one of the best movies I've ever seen. Troy. <coughs> the movie opens up as all good movies should. With a cute little doggo. Oh look at him, he's so cute. He's such a fluffy little pup. Unfortunately, the cuteness doesn't last very long as we abandon our cute doggo and pan over to a battlefield where two armies are preparing for war. Before that though, the two kings decide to have a little one-on-one -on -one chat. One of the kings is the great King Agamemnon, commander of all the Greeks. The other one's not nearly as important, so who cares. So basically the old guy is like... Remove your army from my land. While Agamemnon is like... I like your land. I think we'll stay. You can't have the whole world, Agamemnon. It's too big. Even for you. I don't want to watch another massacre. Let's settle this war in the old manner. Your best fighter against my best. And if my man wins? We'll leave Thessaly for good. And so it is decided. Agrius! This is my man. Achilles! But unfortunately, Achilles is busy getting some of that puss. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I also really like this exchange that he has with the kid that came to retrieve him. The Thessalonian you're fighting. He's the biggest man I've ever seen. I wouldn't want to fight him. That's why no one will remember your name. Oh, get shit on, kid. And so Achilles heads into battle, ready to face Stone Cold Steve Austin. Except, Agamemnon is fucking pissed. I should have you whipped for your impudence. Perhaps you should fight him. Achilles. Achilles. Look at the men's faces. You can save hundreds of them. Think how many songs they'll sing in your honor. But alas, Achilles is swayed by his own ego and ends the fight with a single hit in one of the coolest scenes in the whole movie. Is there no one else? Who are you, soldier? My name is Jeff. We then cut to the land of Sparta, where the two princes Hector and Paris of Troy have been invited to a feast by the king of Sparta himself, Menelaus. Though it seems that young prince Paris has caught feels for Menelaus's wife. And I mean, honestly, can you blame him? Let us drink to peace. To peace. Between Troy and Sparta. As they are drinking and feasting, the king's wife retreats to her room, with Paris spotting her and deciding that he really needs some of that. Hector's just like, not this shit again. So Paris goes to her room as they do the naughty. And as the morning comes, Hector confronts his younger brother. Paris! You do understand why we're in Sparta. For peace. And you understand that Menelaus, the king of Sparta, is a very powerful man. And that his brother Agamemnon, the king of Messene, commands all the Greek forces. Paris! You're my brother and I love you. But if you do anything to endanger Troy, I will rip your pretty face from your pretty face. Now get some sleep. We sail in the morning. They set sail for Troy, but before they can even get there, Paris has a surprise for his brother. I must show you something. It would in fact seem that Paris has sneaked the king's wife Helen on board. Hector is slightly upset about the situation. Do you know what you've done? Do you know how many years our father worked for peace? I love her. <sighs> if you want to take Helen back to Sparta, so be it. But I go with her. To Sparta, they'll kill you. Then I'll die fighting. Oh, and that sounds heroic to you, doesn't it? Tell me, little brother. 
Have you ever killed a man? No. Ever seen a man die in combat? No. I've killed men. And I've heard them dying. And I've watched them dying. And there's nothing glorious about it. I won't ask you to fight my war. You already have. Meanwhile, back in Sparta, Menelaus learns about his recent cuckolding and goes to his brother Agamemnon for solace. I want her back. Well, of course you do. She's a beautiful woman. I want her back so I can kill her with my own two hands. I won't rest till I've burned Troy to the ground. Will you go to war with me, brother? And so the two brothers unite to take down Troy in name of all the cucks in the Greek world. I'll attack them with the greatest force the world has ever seen. I want all the kings of Greece and their armies. One last thing. We need Achilles and his myrmidons. Achilles. There's only one man he'll listen to. I'll send a ship in the morning. The man in question is the king of Ithaca, Sean Bean. King Agamemnon has a favor to ask of you. Of course he does. He of course agrees and sets off to find Achilles, who is currently training with his cousin, Patroclus. Patroclus, my cousin. Odysseus. King of Ithaca. Patroclus. Learning from Achilles himself. Kings would kill for the honor. Are you here at Agamemnon's bidding? We need to talk. Sean Bean explains how Menelaus got cocked real hard, but Achilles doesn't seem to really care. They insulted Greece. They insulted one Greek. A man who couldn't hold on to his wife, what business is that of mine? Prince Hector is he as good a warrior as they say. The best of all the Trojans. Some say he's better than all the Greeks, too. Ah, uh, Sean Bean, you sly yeah, little devil, him. you! So he convinces Achilles by using what else? His ego. This war will never be forgotten. Nor will the heroes who fight in it. Achilles decides to go consult his weird ass mother about his decision and she tells him that if he goes to Troy he's gonna fucking die. So naturally he wastes no time making sail along with all of the Greeks armies. Meanwhile back in Troy the two princes have returned from their very successful mission for peace. They are greeted by their father, King Priam, who is such a good guy he's not even mad at Paris about the whole Helen thing. He's just disappointed. We also meet Briseis, who's cousin to the princess and... Beloved cousin, your beauty grows with each new moon. Whoa, easy there Paris, she's your cousin, fuck's sake! Although they do like to kiss each other a little too much, don't they? Afterwards, Priam discusses the fate of Troy with his son, as Hector explains that he's actually an atheist. Even Agamemnon is no match for the gods. And how many battalions does the sun god command? The next day, we see Troy as they ready themselves for the war that's about to come. And come it does, as the bell of war rings, signaling the arrival of the enemy ships approaching the shore. Achilles wants to show everyone that his dick is bigger, so he takes the lead and charges the beach. What's the fool doing? He's going to take the beach of Troy with 50 men? Ah! Achilles leaps into battle and along with his myrmidons he t uh, holy shit uh, he, he, he takes the, the beach in mere minutes he then heads into the nearby temple of Apollo and takes out all the guards in spectacular fashion soon after though Hector arrives with his men and Achilles in a demonstration of power does a 360 no scope spear throw on one of his soldiers and then dips inside the temple 
They of course get ambushed and a fight ensues with Hector breaking up from his men and chasing after Achilles. Go home, Prince. Drink some wine, make love to your wife. Tomorrow we'll have our war. But how many wives wait at Troy's gates for husbands I'll never see again? Perhaps your brother can comfort them. I hear he's good at charming other men's wives. After letting Hector go, Achilles does a straight up Nazi salute and secures the beaches of Troy officially. Afterwards, he heads into his tent to find that his men left a surprise for him. Why, it's none other than Briseis! Remember her? Remember Briseis? Yeah, she was at the temple apparently, and got captured. Dumbass. What's your name? Achilles asks about her name as he takes his clothes off and uh... Whew, just... Wow. You see why I like this movie now? Are you afraid, Briseis? Should I be? You don't need to fear me, girl. The only Trojan who can say that. He is then summoned into Agamemnon's tent as the kings have gathered to celebrate their recent victory. Tomorrow, we'll eat supper in the gardens of Troy. Leave us. Kings did not kneel to Achilles. Perhaps the kings were too far behind to see. The soldiers won the battle. HISTORY REMEMBERS KINGS, NOT SOLDIERS! The two have a little one-on-one -on -one scuffle, with Agamemnon being like, I got your girlfriend. Spoils of war. But Achilles goes like... But then Briseis is like... Too many people have died today! So then Achilles is like... Mighty Achilles, silenced by a slave girl. Before my time is done. I will look down on your corpse and smile. Back in Troy, the people are mourning their dead by... Can you shut up? I'm trying to talk here. Mourning their dead by burning them as tradition requires. Meanwhile, the higher-ups are discussing on what to do next. Our walls have never been breached. We have the finest archers in the world. And we have Hector. <laughs> I spoke with two farmers today. This is a sign from Apollo. Yeah, okay man, just sit down please. Amidst all the discussion, Paris comes up with a great idea. Tomorrow morning I will challenge Menelaus for the right to Helen. The winner will take her home. The loser will burn before nightfall. 